Welcome to the Warrior Razor Podcast. We're your hosts, Angela and Carrie. We all need help and support to stay focused and challenged to courageously pursue the life God has called us to live. What we do matters. Here on the Warrior Razor Podcast, we seek Jesus first and use the skills, talents, and passions he has given us second. Hey everyone, I am excited to introduce our next guest on the show today. Her name is Amy Leewald. Amy is a child of God. She married her high school sweetheart, Scott, who is a pastor at Genoa Baptist in Westerville, Ohio. Together, they're raising four energetic boys. And not only is Amy a mom and a wife, but she's also a Bible teacher and a director of LifeWise Academy. And she's boldly shaping the next generation with passion and faith. What's truly awesome about Amy is her knack for embracing life's awkward moments with a smile and a laugh. She's all about seizing the next right steps, whether it's stepping into new opportunities or facing challenges head on. Will you join us today as we dive into Amy's journey, her faith, and the incredible lessons she's learned along the way? Get ready to be uplifted because with Amy Leewald, it is always an inspiring time. Welcome everyone to our podcast. Today we are recording a interview with a really wonderful growing friend of mine, I will say. Well, friends, but it's still growing, right, Amy? Yeah. <laughs> um, Amy is a mom. She's a ministry leader. She's a pastor's wife. She is a lover of Jesus. And she is When I think of Amy, I think, man, she wants everyone to know about her Jesus. And that song, I don't know if you guys know that song, but I think of you when I think of that, Amy, because you just you just know how amazing he is and you want everyone to know it. So, so I'm excited to have you on the show today. I'm excited to talk to you about next right steps. Um, but we want to hear from you a little bit about who you are, you know, give us, um, it can be the highlight reel. It can be some of the quirky, fun things, anything you want us to know about you, family, all that stuff. Just tell us about you, Amy. Oh, well, thanks for having me, Angela and Carrie. This is exciting to be here today. Um, a little bit about myself, the highlight role. Re- we are, <laughs> real is, <There> it is. <laughs> um, okay. I am quirky. And so one of the things about me is I embrace awkwardness. Um, I love to engage in conversation and, um, I have four boys and, um, my mom, what are you doing? Comes out of their mouth a lot because <laughs> I really like to, to approach things and, and just get answers and dig in. And so I embrace awkward. That's one thing about me that I, I just embrace now. Um, I don't, okay. It. Time out. Time have- out. Time out. I'll, okay. Awkwardness. There's got to be a story, at least one from the Rolodex of your life where you can be like, this is a moment that I have embraced and it's a, sh- a story to share. Go. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I mean, for instance, this is just ongoing. It's every day, Angela. But, you know, at church, we have a, um, uh, my husband's a pastor at the church. And um, I, every week I see these, co- <laughs> this is so funny. It came to my mind. I see these college boys. Um, it, they're from OU. They come every week and each week the group keeps growing and growing and growing. And so I made it my mission to really just go over and say hi to them and like encourage them. Thanks for being here. This is so awesome. You're here. Well, (laughs) I approached them and I wanted to introduce them to my husband and we were going to do a game night for them and whatnot. And I just went on and on and I told them how cute they are. You guys are just so cute. I am so glad you're here. Do you guys have plans Friday night? And I kind of left it at that. And then I realized what I said. And I was like, so I'm not asking you on a date. Yeah, like, yeah I a group date. Yeah. 
so, you know, those things just mm-hmm. kind of come out because I just really am a social person. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like to embrace uh, conversation I love it. and it usually comes out awkward. So anyway, I asked um 20 year old boys on a date <laughs> and my husband's right there in church. <laughs> I think sometimes like, do you guys find this? I mean, we're all in our forties and I feel like sometimes I look at kids and I'm like, how old are you? And I, I lose concept of how old they could be. And they're probably oh thinking on the other end of that that random invitation, like, who is this old, old lady <laughs> inviting us out on a, on a Friday night day? Like, who is she kidding? Who is she? They're going to have, they're going to have the best story to tell their moms. Well, and <laughs> speaking of young kids, we just had boys. I'm calling them boys put in a ceiling fan for us yesterday. They were children. <laughs> <laughs> they look like they were 12. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I'm like, shouldn't you be at school? Exactly. <laughs> Oh, that's funny, Amy. Me. I love that. I love that. Okay, right. I've hij- hijacked your your uh, your your introduction of yourself. So continue on with the, the thirty thousand oh. people because we've given a formal bio. But anything else uh, before we start rolling here <laughs> officially? <laughs> yeah, I mean, just real quick. I have four boys. They're the age range from. Um, uh, 13 to 22. So, um, the Lord, um, did not give me girls and each one I prayed for a little Hannah and each time he gave me another boy. And so, um, the Lord's plans are better than mine. And, um, I'm married to my husband, well, 24 years almost. And, um, we were high school sweethearts. Um, one of the interesting facts, so I hope you girls still love me after this is, I am a Michigander. I'm from Michigan. And so um, when the Lord called us here 17 years ago, we were like, what? (laughs) You're calling us to OSU, Ohio State? Um, But there's a testimony in that that will come out later. He knew exactly where we needed to be. Um, So we still get a lot of flack of being Michigan fans. Uh I'm a 10-year cancer survivor. Mm -hmm. And um, I, the Lord has just use that in my life to see others. And um, that's kind of just a snapshot of of what the Lord has done through me. I love people. I love coffee. I love being outdoors. And I am a very messy, awkward person. But I think that's what he uses is he uses just my obedience because I am not qualified. So... <laughs> Oh, I love it. And you're not afraid to ask. And I think that that's even how we got to the being on the interview today with you. Um, My daughter is doing a talent show and you are intimately and integrally in, am I saying that word right? Whatever, we can edit later, uh, involved (laughs) with a ministry here that is just breathing life into the public school system. And so I had reached out to you with a question about that. And then you're like, hey, also... I would love to just share my stories with with your listeners and with your viewers. So we are just really excited that this worked out. Mm -hmm. So with that little tee up, we're talking about the next right step and where we are with life, with ministry, with uh, we have a lot of people who are entrepreneurs that listen to the show or they're starting out in ministry. So it doesn't necessarily have to apply to those particular audience members. But would you share a little bit about your journey to where you are? Grand, you said you're from Michigan. Well, we will let that pass because forgive you know, me, yeah, it, we'll <laughs> forgive you for that. But uh, <laughs> from from Michigan to here, uh, where you are right now, I know that's like a long lifeline of, of moments. But yeah, go with that. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. So, you know, the Lord... Um, as a little girl, he, he, he drew my heart to him, but there's been many steps of, um, just my, I think just being obedient because it's not been easy. And so through the obedience, it's led me, led me to stand confident in where I am today. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, my, my journey, I think with where I am today and your theme, the, the next right steps, um, really, um, started, started, you know, when the Lord called me and my husband into ministry when we were in college. And, you know, we laugh because now I have boys that are the same age that I had them at. And that is just crazy to me because we started off really young. And at the time, that was just our obedience and and staying faithful to our calling um, to stay pure to one another. And, um, so that's just kind of being honest. Um, and so we got married yeah. in college and, and he honored that. And he started our journey of having children early 
I was married for three months and I got pregnant with my first son at the age of 21. And it, it really rocked our world because we were still trying to survive and, and graduate college. And we were making um, $5 an hour at Ramada Inn in Virginia. And, and so all those things have led up to where God has taken me on my health journey the, to why he had to start my family so early. Mm-hmm. And so um, so having, we'll never have the full picture. I'll never have the full picture of my journey in my life, but it, it started, it started, um, obviously from birth, but it started me really leaning in and trusting him when I didn't see the whole plan, but now seeing and looking back, I'm like, Oh, that's why I had Zach at, at 21. And that's why I had them really fast. And I was done having kids at, at 33. And and this is why we moved to Ohio, because I needed to be at this certain hospital to have these certain special doctors. And so um, that was a very long, um, broad answer. I can get yeah. more specific for me, Angela and Carrie, but I, I just want to say, he has led me here today um, with me sometimes saying this doesn't make sense. I don't want to do this. My tagline is just push through the moment, push through because God is faithful. Mm-hmm. And so when I lean into that, I can look back and say, this is why that was so hard. But because I pushed through and did the right next thing, mm-hmm. I'm here today and confident saying that God is faithful. When when you say push through, give me a tangible, like, or give us a tangible, what does that actually look like? What does pushing through look like for Amy? Yeah. So, um, so I really had to learn what that looked like when I got diagnosed with a cancer 10 years ago. So um, my boys were all still little. My oldest was only going to be 13 at the time. And then I had a three-year-old. And um, there was, you know, this moment of despair because when I found out I was sick and um, they diagnosed me with a, and I felt it, there was a huge 11 centimeter tumor in my liver. Um, When that all started spiraling and we started going to doctor's appointments and I started realizing this isn't just um, an easy fix. Um, You know, there was a moment specifically that I wanted to mention um, that when I got diagnosed with cancer, it wasn't like the first appointment. So when we were sitting in the doctor's office and it finally was like, okay, we can finally tell you what this is. Um, and, and they told me, they said, hey, um, this is Nets cancer. This is carcinoid. This is non-curable. Um, this is something that is probably going to take your life and your wow. life expectancy is going to be um, five years or less. And so I started my, I kind of just, paused for a moment. And I looked at my husband, he was white as a ghost. Mm-hmm. And I, I tangibly and, and audibly heard the Lord in in the spirit. And cause I'm a believer, I'm a, a born again believer and the Holy spirit resides in me. And I truly heard the spirit said, pause and be still. And I am God. And he, he literally just implanted that verse, be still I'm God. I'm in charge of this Amy. And I'll walk you through this mm-hmm. through death or life because I'm in control. And so, so, so in that moment, (laughs) when I figured out, oh, this isn't just uh, something that's going to go away, I had to say, lean in and say, okay, Lord, promise me in scripture. You know, there was years leading up to that where I was starting to dig in the word more. I was teaching Bible study at church. So it, it caused me to really understand it more. And so when I said, and heard him say, be still and know that I'm God, Amy, you don't know the whole story. And you hear what the doctor is saying, and your husband looks white as a ghost, Um, you lean into me because I'm sovereign. And so I say it all because there's many days still 10 years later, Carrie, that I I have to push through. Um, Because there's a lot of things that go into my health journey. And um, it could swallow me um, in, in depression and anxiety. Um, So the pushing through for me um, specifically is, Amy, you push through to the next moment because God has something on the other side and it's not easy always, but if you don't obey me, you're going to miss out on something. And I'm, I'm almost fearful of that. I'm fearful to miss out on what God has for me because what I realized is, is that my health journey has opened up (laughs) windows of anxiety and depression that I've had to deal with. I'm not the only one. There are so many people that struggle with anxiety and depression. And the more vulnerable I am to talk about it, the more I heal and that I can offer encouragement to others. Yeah. 
I love that you said a couple of things. You said you were in the midst of teaching Bible study. So you were intimately in God's word where it's more than just like a knowing of scripture where you can memorize it. Like you were interacting with a living, breathing word. And in Psalm, I think it's Psalm 46, 10, be still and know that I'm God. The context of that is there was turmoil going all around when the psalmist wrote that. I think it was even David who wrote it. I don't I can go back and we can edit this if I if we're if I'm wrong. But even in the context of what was when that passage was written, it totally applies to your life because in the stillness, it doesn't mean just like sit and do nothing. Right. It's like, mm-hmm. let me and my sovereignty work my work my way out. Let me do what I do best. Like you don't have to carry the load. I will do it for you. Yeah. And the other thing that's so cool about just that little snippet of your testimony, it's the suffering is there, the, the mm-hmm. sorrow, the pain. I, I can't even imagine you were talking about how your kids were so little. And when you got that diagnosis and they gave you like a five year lifespan, I, I literally, as you were saying that I was trying to put myself in your position. Mm-hmm. And I, I know that there are people that have endured that. And they might even be going through it right now as they listen to this conversation. But the other part about what what we can come through or what the Lord brings us through is that it's not wasted on us. Like we can use the same thing that we have come through to, to be a comfort to others. And for that alone, what a gift that you didn't allow it to swallow you up, to, to take you out. And even in the moments where you're still probably actively having to struggle with it, you can remember what he's brought you through so you can be a testimony to others in the future or even right now. So man, I mean, you just ministered to me just as we were having this conversation. So I love the, 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 the art of pushing through and what it has looked like for you. Yeah. I, it's interesting as we were talking about what I I was teaching Bible study at the time and the passage that I was teaching in my women's class and my husband was teaching in the men's class. And it was by accident. We didn't plan this as we were teaching in James. And in that first part says in this world, we will have trouble. And I've really embraced that because um, we're just, we're broken and we live in a broken world. Um, This is kind of, um, fun. And I'll share this with you is, you know, 10 years out, God, you know, that surgery was miraculous. You know, he, they were able to remove um, that tumor from my, my liver. And we call that my day, but I still have cancer. I still have cancer in my liver. I still go for treatments every month. Um, you know, I get scans every four months. I actually go to the doctor Wednesday to get results. And so, so I had to, I had to figure out in my, in my mind that I might not ever receive healing on this side of heaven, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but what am I going to do with that? And so I loved your theme, the next right steps, because every month that I'm driving down for treatment or every time I'm getting scans, it's just my next right thing, but that's not everybody's story. The next right thing might be just going to work. The the next right thing might just be changing that diaper Mm -hmm. and it's mundane and it gets old and it gets weary. Um, but that's my right next thing. And, and so as I get blood work, I don't know if I'm allowed to show my tattoo on here, yeah, your yeah. tattoo girl. Oh, we embrace it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, you know, I put Christ it on my arm. Yeah. yeah. I, I, but I get blood there a lot. And so it's for, for those of you that can't see Amy's arm, if you're listening to us, it's on her left forearm and it says in Christ alone. Yeah. Amen. And that was the very first tattoo I've gotten. And um, my my husband thought, oh my gosh, you're getting a tattoo. You know, here I'm in this little Baptist preacher wife. And so um, I love it now. I've embraced it, you know, because God, it, it still is messy. A lot of times people will come to me and it's either um, with health diagnosis now yeah. or the, the depression and the anxiety and all that stuff. But what's the next right thing that I can do as, as a believer is that you can pray and we can come to the Lord and he is sovereign and he sees it all. Yeah. And sometimes it's really hard, but for me, um, just knowing that his word is alive and well and, and leaning on to his promises, you know, he got me through 10 years ago and, and he'll get me through no matter what the cause is, even this Wednesday, yeah. he will get me through that. And so you know, I have really had to embrace James that in this world, we're going to have trouble. I mean, we're not going to have this perfect life. So what's going to happen? What's going to ground us? We have to have a foundation before those things come. Mm -hmm. And so I love, that's why you guys are doing this. You're Mm -hmm. equipping women with a foundation because stuff's going to hit. It's going to come. I mean, it's a hard thing. It's a really, really hard thing. And we don't know the end of the, and and the outcome. And we could preach this and it's so easy to say it, to say it, to say it, but to, to actually live it out. Yeah, it is so challenging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't, um, I can't imagine, you know, what 
my next right step would be if I didn't have Jesus in my heart Mm -hmm. and just what, what people might turn to or what people might put their hope and their trust in and what, what, how fleeting those things are and how very faulty all the other things are. Um, but the rock of Jesus is not, you know, he is, he's not going anywhere. Um, God is faithful and and his promises are true. I've seen it time and time again, Amy, you've talked about it. Um, you know, our, our husbands are going to fail us. Our kids are going to fail us. Doctors are going to fail us. Things are going to fail us. We can't put our hope in anything else. And if we try to, it's just, it's sinking sand. You know, it's like trying to, if you've ever been to the ocean where like the sand is just super saturated and you just like sink every step. Yeah. I mean, that's all that other stuff is. Um, That's all that other stuff is, but, but God, but God is not. No. (laughs) I mean, this, this interview is not like our typical ones. And I just feel like I'm feeling pressed in my spirit right now. Amy, you talked about on the show uh, at the top of the show that the Holy spirit spoke to you and you, you felt his tangible uh, presence. And when he gave you that, that passage of remembrance, I feel like right now in this moment, if there's someone going through something um, there's an answer and there's a hope. And the three of us on this call right now, we know who that hope is. And um, I, Amy being a pastor's wife, would you just, uh, take a minute and just do a call to salvation. Would, would you, would you be willing to do that for anybody that's listening or watching us? Yeah. You know, um, this verse I wanted to share, so I'm going to read it and then I'll, I'm going to, um, I'll pray for your audience, Angela and Carrie. Um, but Psalms 46, one says God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times and trouble. And so, um, Lord, we are just so honored um, to come to you in our troubles. Lord, <laughs> all of us have troubles, but as Carrie said, where, where is our rock? Mm-hmm. So Lord, through knowing you and our personal relationship with you, um, we can have confidence that our hope is not in anything in this world, but that it's in knowing you as our personal savior, knowing that you died for us, that you love us and you, you live. Lord, so I do pray that if somebody in this audience listening doesn't know you as their personal savior and that they're going through their own hell, Lord, that they realize that they don't have to bury that and, and carry that alone, Lord, that they have a father that loves them and sees them and holds them or draw them into you. Let them know that there is hope beyond this life, that they can have eternal life with you through a relationship through you, Father. We love you. Amen. Amen. And if you guys prayed that prayer with us for the first time, if you really felt that, will you let us know so we can just yeah. rejoice with you? Man, because all of heaven's rejoicing right now too. What a cool, cool thing. Thank you for doing that for us, Amy. I know we are just like putting you on the spot right now. You're like <laughs> such a cool, yeah, I mean, you said you embrace awkward. So we, I mean, you guys knew you were the right person for this call today. <laughs> She's like, what did I sign up for? <laughs> Both of these interview interviewers are crying on the phone at the <laughs> moment. Oh, um, the keeps our hearts together, and so he know he knows exactly what needs to be said and and when and how and all yeah. the things. Mm. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Next right <laughs> like, like I mean, seriously, like this is what it looks like to walk it out in the in the in the physical in the day to day. Yeah. Um, like you said, you've got a, a, an appointment, Amy, coming up where you're, you're going, not knowing what the results will be. Mm-hmm. Um, so will you talk to us a little bit about how do you have peace mm-hmm. going into this next step where you're, when you don't know the outcome of these results potentially, but talk to us about what that looks like for you. Yeah. How do you set yourself up for that? Yeah. Yeah. I, so I really, it's been, that's a great question because, you know, in, in the beginning of this journey, um, 10 years ago, it was all physical, Mm. you know, I had to physically fight this, there was several major surgeries and different appointments and specialists and whatnot. And I want to add God moved us to OSU, not just because of this church, he, he, the church that I'm in, he moved us because there's only five specialists in the whole world. And and, and it happens to be at, at OSU. Wow. And so, so watching God unfold, his plan, because he has a plan for all of us. But sometimes when we're not pressing in, we think, oh, that was just a coincidence or that worked out. That That's not the case. No, the Lord knew when he moved us here that I would need this doctor. 
Mm -hmm. And so I say that all to say is that, you know, I, now it was the beginning was physical. So that was, that was tough. I mean, I could tough it out. I had to figure it out. I, it was a lot, but so now it's, you're right. It's a mental thing. And so, um, so honestly, it's just staying in, grounded in God's word. It's just a part of my, my life. And so when I go for my appointments and go for my scans and have to wait for the results, um, I just lean in because I know that he's in control. Yeah. You know, I know this cancer is not going to like take me overnight. Mm -hmm. It just might mean that, um, that there's different treatments or different ways to approach it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I'm not scared. I really am not. I'm not fearful. Um, it, there's times where I get annoyed, you know, that this is part of my life. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, like, okay, that's honest. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm going at this again, you know, whatever. It, it's not convenient, mm -hmm. but um, it's opened up an opportunity for me um, to talk to nurses to, you know, to be really honest, one of my um, main nurses, she reaches out to me in, in, in different forms and whether that's she's allowed to or not. And so different relationships have formed through this. And so each time I'm like, okay, Lord, who, who today do you have in my path that I'm going to see that needs a little bit of a smile? It could just be a smile, you know? And so, um, I think that pushing through is part of that, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, Hey, if, if this is part of your walk, Amy, this is what I gave you. You're going to go for scans and then you're not going to know the results. So what are you going to do? You're going to lean on me because I'm sovereign and, and I have this. And so it's just a continuous reminder. So it is annoying to be really honest. It, it's like, oh, it's there again. And I have to lean in really hard, maybe in a, a sense that maybe other people don't as much, but it's kept me very grounded because yeah. as you said earlier, Carrie, my hope my perspective is a little different. Little things are not going to frazzle me as much. Um, my hope is in Jesus Christ. It's not in my scans. So if I were to get a bad scan on Wednesday, you know what? It would be hard and I would physically and mentally have to get through it. But I'm okay because Jesus Christ is truly, is truly my hope. And so when you said, I don't know what I would do without the hope of Jesus, I sit and bring with a lot of patience that their hope isn't in Jesus. Right. So their fear and anxiety looks different than mine. Because when I spiral, mm -hmm. at least I know my foundation, at least I know where, where to go, which is the word of God. Mm -hmm. And it's not always easy and it's not always perfect. But at the end of the day, I can lay down and sleep at night knowing that God is in control. Yeah. I, I like that you said something you said to me stood out. It's that, that other perspective it's Lord, this is, um, not what I'm going through is not going to be wasted. And, you know, you are going to use this for some reason. And I don't know right this second, but, um, in this moment, uh, it can't be all about me, you know? Mm -hmm. And so what can I do? Who can I, like you said, smile to, who can you talk to? I think that other perspective can help us mentally, really take the focus off of what we're going through or what we're facing. Um, not because we, uh, maybe it could go to the negative side of like, just not dealing with what we're dealing with, but when it's healthy, you know, and we are, we are, you know, doing it in a healthy way and focusing on other people. I think it, those during tough times, it can really help you get through really difficult situations that, that allows us to, 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 we know the truth that God uses things for his glory and our good, but maybe even we can see some tangible actions of that by being other perspective, you know, other, other focused, so, you know, and seeing that nurse reach out to you, like tangibly, yeah. as you're going through difficult things, you can have that example. And, and it just makes, like you said, what you're going through, um, a little less, a little less hard. And I, and also to point out your diagnosis is not your identity. Right. Like you are not the woman with the issue of cancer, the issue of blood, the issue of whatever. And to, to step outside of that and realize, OK, beyond the inconvenient trips to the doctor, the inconvenient blood work, you you are ministry minded, you're heaven minded. And so you're not just sitting in that space of this is who I am. This is my lot in life. Mm -hmm. You're walking in step with with the father. You're walking in tandem with what his heart for you is. And you're and you're living your life in spite of an ongoing diagnosis. So talk to us about what living yeah. your life looks like, taking the next right steps, 
beyond the cancer, beyond the treatment, beyond all of that yuck, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. I love that you pointed that out because I never wanted to be known as the girl with cancer. Yeah. I, that's part of my story, yeah. but that isn't my story. My story yeah. is, is my Jesus. So I love that you said that. Um, you know, I think that um, where he's taking me um, in, in the next right steps is just being obedient and living my life fully every every day. And it looks different. So right now, you know, if this is a quick snippet is, you know, two years ago, um, I was able to stay home with all my boys and have side jobs and, and different things um, and, and be able to raise them and bring in income, help out at the church. But two years ago, God really laid it heavy on my heart that I, I have something different for you, Amy, but be obedient. And he specifically, I love the garden. I was in the garden and he specifically told me one day. Amy, you're going back to college. Cause if you remember, I had babies in college and I, and ah. I don't I didn't say this, but I dropped out of college. And so he, he said two years ago, Amy, go back to college. And I'm like, Ugh. you know, I, I'm in my forties and we don't have the money for it. So I went to my husband, Scott said, Hey, Lord's telling me to go back to college. He's like, we have two boys going into college. We can't afford for you to go to college. <laughs> you and are crazy. <laughs> this is quite frank. And and so I said, okay, you know, black and white to me. Okay. Well, he told me again. And I said, Scott, I'm supposed to go back to college. And Scott said, okay, we'll make it work. So we made it work. And so I say that all to say is that I, again, I had to blindly just trust the Lord and what he was telling me. And so I went back to college and um, the Lord called me into the ministry that I'm doing here, Angela, that you mentioned um, through LifeWise Academy and the public schools. And I needed that degree to be able to do what I'm doing today. And it's just paper, the paper, blah, who cares? Mm -hmm. But that paper qualified me to be in a position where I'm able to train up um, Christian educators and oversee them so that they can teach the gospel in public schools during school hours. And so without that paper, um, I would say that I probably wouldn't be in the position that I, mm -hmm. that I am today. And so um, that's kind of like the next steps that I've seen the Lord do in my life besides this, this journey of my health and stuff. It's just figuring out now that my kids are getting older, what do you have for me, Lord? And the local church is where it's at with me. Like everything is it, the local church. The Lord has called us to the local church. He wants us to be in community. And, and I have that. But I knew that God wanted um, his story to be told and the gospel to be shared somehow outside of the four walls yeah. of my church. And yeah. I didn't know what that looked like for me. But when this opportunity came, it was like a no brainer. And then I was like, God, this is why you told me in the garden that day to go to, to college. And and have my boys watch me walk across the the um you know college stage and get my degree at the age of 42. That's why you had me do that because you had something much more in plan. But through my if I didn't obey and I yeah. didn't I, I wouldn't be there. So, you know, when you ask what are the next right steps for me in ministry, it's just honestly day to day. Okay, Lord, what do you have for me today? Oh, this might seem crazy or annoying, but I'm going to obey you because you are faithful. And so that's kind of how I approach life. I don't always do it right. And I am, again, awkward and sloppy about a lot of things, but I've seen that if I, if I obey God, he has some great things out there for me and you. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So good. I, I feel like, um, there, this is just speaking to me in so many ways, because a lot of times when I hear God say something, um, I want like the, the next 10 steps, not just the next one step. <laughs> You know, and so because I'm not um, for using your words, I'm not awkward and sloppy. Uh, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but but I'm kind of the opposite of that, right? Yeah. You know, we we have different personalities, so I'm more of like a let's write the list, let's check it off. If I did it and it wasn't on the list, I'm going to write it on the list and then check it off. You know, <laughs> and so I I want like the next ten steps, and I don't want it to look sloppy, and I don't want it to or to feel sloppy or to um to, to like stumble around is like, I don't want anybody to see me stumbling. I want to know like the next thing. And I want to look like I got it together. So next right steps can look both ways, but I think that there's a real beauty in not, um, worrying about what it looks like or what it, you know, might, um, from the outside, what might pe people might think or, or how it might feel to me, but that yeah. just pure obedience, who that is, 
that's that's good stuff. That's well, good. Carrie, you and I even talked about on our last episode that we did the bonus episode, like, yes, no, I don't know. And Amy, you said it perfectly. Like when you went to your husband, you're like, hey, I really feel like the Lord is telling me to do this. He's like, yeah, no. And sometimes and that was his that was his human response. Right. Because, I mean, on paper, it didn't make sense. You had two boys in college, college expensive. Also, like at the place in that you were in life, it probably didn't make sense other than like, why do you need this? Is it like a self-fulfilling kind of thing? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes people don't get it. Other people, even well-meaning mm -hmm. biblically rooted people won't always get the dream or the calling because it's yeah. not theirs to carry out. And and there's wisdom and and going there and tempering that and, and, and having that counsel. But when he came back to you and was like, no, no, you really need to go back to school Kudos to you for being for that obedient yes, because uh, we've talked about this before on the show. We're responsible for being obedient, not the outcome of that obedience. And I think that if more of us could grasp hold of that truth, we would be doing just some major ripples for the kingdom. Mm. Yeah. So two years ago, you got your degree. You're using it now. Uh, like you said, it's, eh, it's on paper, but it was, it was the next right step for you to get in front of an audience of young little lives mm -hmm. that we will never know the outcome of that obedience for who, who you are helping raise up in those little tiny warriors that come into the schools every week. Right. Is that what you're doing? And you're, you're there in the schools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, God is just so awesome how he wants to get the good news out. And so, through LifeWise Academy, we're able to go and teach during school hours for Olin Tangi, um, during lunch and recess once a week. We get to teach the Bible project and, and take them through the curriculum. And we get and right now we're seeing over 600 students a week. And what's been eye opening to me as being in the ministry over um, 24 years now is how many kids in our backyard. You always hear that kids in our yeah. backyard have never heard the name of Jesus before. But now that I'm seeing it up close and personal and seeing it for, for face value, the kids in our backyard, I'll say it, do not know the name of yeah. Jesus. And so, you know, I was in the church world so long that it was parents choices to bring them to church. I, I they knew a foundation, even if they didn't follow it or not. And so church, a lot of choice, a lot of times is a choice, right? Cause yeah. the families have made that a priority when they come into our Bible class during the week, they, um, they, they have never heard the name of Jesus before a lot of these kids and their parents don't make, um, their parents don't make this a priority. And so that's been really eye opening to me as how many people, um, have not taken their, uh, or introduced their kids to Jesus or don't have a Bible at home or don't, um, have never prayed. Um, those are the tools that we're able to introduce. Um, oh, and cool. it's been awesome uh, to be front lines in this. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's how, so Amy, that's how you and I kind of got connect, reconnected. I, but crazy story. I used to work at Genoa uh, school when and it's anyway, but when we came back together was when LifeWise was um, asking to use our church for, for this ministry. And it, it really is really cool to see. And it's really neat to see the growth of it within the school district and the way that parents are um, embracing it and just the imp the generational impact that it's going yeah. to have is so, so huge. And it's no, no easy task. I mean, there's how many schools are you guys in right now? Yeah. So we're in um, eight schools and we're hoping to hit middle school next year. So there's a lot of things in the, in the, in the pipeline and yeah. You know, as you're talking about right next steps, I was reading Proverbs this morning <laughs> because there's a lot of, um, I mean, we're one of the largest school districts in Ohio. We have, we're going to go on 17 elementary schools. And so yeah. when I think about that, it can get overwhelming, sure. but the possibility of just sharing the name of Jesus with these kids yeah. and, um, and partaking in that and, and just leaning into that, it feels like a overwhelming calling, not just on me for our whole team, because we don't know what the next step is necessarily. There's lots of logistic things that go into that and money. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I will say that um, as I think about the opportunity of of just saying yes to to that college degree, just saying yes to LifeWise Academy, just saying yes to, to today, that might mean that one student has never heard the name of Jesus will be introduced to him today. And not because of anything I'm doing, but just because 
of the doors that the Lord has has put in front of us and we're walking through them as, as a team. Yeah. It's opened up my eyes um, from a ministry perspective and as a child of God is that when we're in public outside of our four walls of our church, because it's easy to talk about Jesus in, in our church. I know that I, I go to church every Sunday and I'm and I'm involved in my church. But when we're outside of the four walls of our church, just the name of Jesus means so much because these kids come in and they're like, I believe in many guides. I don't know who God is. I'm an atheist, you know, and they have all these things. So when we speak the name of Jesus in public, that goes a lot further for me now because I see how much it's missing in our world um, and, and the true meaning behind that. Um, so I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, no, I, was just, I was just going to say, sometimes we need to remember like our, our holy huddles. I like to call Ooh, I would, literally, huddles. I was going to say that, Carrie. Like, I those love are it. My next words. I Go. love it. <laughs> Give me to it. Yeah, yeah. We're, we need to get out of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. We get in, in our holy huddles. They're important because Christian community is super important. Like we need each other, right? That's a big part of our walk as Christians. But if we get too comfortable in those and we forget about the lost souls right outside our door, right in our backyard, there's something wrong with that. And so maybe someone listening today just needs yeah. to be reminded that, Hey, like you've got an awesome holy huddle, but there are people right now that need Jesus. That's your next right step. And can Say we just be real? Never. Yep. We don't need to go to Africa. We don't, and, and mission, missions abroad. There's a, there, there's such a, a beautiful experience. And if you've of never course. had the opportunity to do that, it'll change your heart. It'll yeah. change your heart, yeah. but we don't have, we can go next door, knock on the door to our neighbor because they need Jesus too. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but holy huddles, there's a, there's value in that. We need the people to support us and undergird us in the callings that we're, we're being equipped for, but then to also like, let's put feet to action. Let's put hands to the, to the ministry. And it's going to look different for each and every one of us. Oh, so yeah. good. Amy, <laughs> man, you're all such an encouragement to, yeah, to Carrie you. and I both. I mean, who knew? What, I mean, if you stuck with us on this call, this interview, this line, I mean, we've been through the um, emotional gamut and it's just been so good. It's so beautiful because this is what, what the body of Christ looks like. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so good. Do you have anything else you want to share with our listeners or our viewers? Any last, any last Amy words of wisdom? <laughs> yeah, sure. I, you know, I, I will just lean into um, whatever, whatever you're going through, whatever I'm going through um, that, the, the next, next right steps might just be pushing through because life is hard. You know, I'm thinking about my girlfriend, actually, even just right now, she she lost her baby at, at three months, um, seven years ago. And this is the week that we mourn with her. And so sometimes it just means getting out of bed and saying, Lord, this is the day that you have made and you gave me breath in my lungs. So you show me the right next steps. We don't have the next right steps, but if we lean in and push through because it's hard, <laughs> but you can do it if you lean on Jesus, because he is our, our true hope. And so um, that's just what I'll leave you with is just really push through whatever you're going through, but push through with Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for being here so much. We appreciate you. And we thank you for the work that you're doing. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you, girls. And to all of our fellow warrior raisers, aim your arrows well. Thanks for listening to the Warrior Razor podcast. If you liked today's episode, please like, subscribe, and share it. Or for more information, feel free to follow us on www.warriorrazor.com.